Hi everyone, it's Liam and Liam here from US Sports Scholarships. We are here to deliver you an online rugby seminar. So thanks for showing your interest in the program. The purpose of tonight, I know that for some of you, this will be completely new. Whereas for others, you might have already done some research and know athletes that have already gone out to America on rugby scholarships. So it's gonna be a quick 40 to 45 minutes overview of the process and also how us at US Sports Scholarships can help you live the American dream, playing your sport and studying out in America. And within that, I'll also give you a little bit more background about both of us as well. So without further ado, I shall try and share my screen and get straight into the presentation. Liam, if you can just confirm that we're all good there and you can see it. Yeah, got you there, mate, perfect. Perfect. Okay. So I think that would probably be the best that we can do. So first and foremost, we always get told by marketing that we have to push the social media channels, but there is actually a, a genuine benefit for you to do so. Um, and the main thing is, is, is Liam in Australia, but then also myself and, and Brett in the UK, we're always going to be putting the latest updates in terms of our trial events, but also insights into what's going on within rugby um, and the college game out there. Uh, Liam's also going to talk about Major League Rugby and the opportunities there too. So as I said, I've done my bit there, so marketing will be happy. So whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter or YouTube, do um, subscribe and follow us for all the latest college and sports news. Um, and I'm pretty sure all of you will have already been on the website, ussportscholarships.com. Um, and I believe for the rugby specific content is forward slash rugby. That being said, we'll get straight into the content. So first and foremost, why choose America? As we know, whether you're listening you know, from Australia or New Zealand or in the UK, there is already a very strong presence in terms of rugby um, and the level and standard of rugby is incredibly high. So you know, you might be wondering, why would I go to America to play that? Um, but it's actually an incredible opportunity, but also a really exciting time to get involved with rugby in America. It is hands down the fastest growing sport in America in terms of popularity, but also adoption. And that's down from youth level all the way through to college. And then as I touched on a little bit there, also with Major League Rugby doing their first ever draft last year as well. It, you know, it is really growing. And that's not just men's rugby, that's also women's. Uh, women's rugby is recognised as an emerging sport by the NCAA, which might mean nothing to you at the moment, but by the end of it, it definitely will. Now, one thing with America, as we know, same with Australia, is it's a very big place. Um, and there are a lot of institutions that can deliver degree options for college and universities. However, even myself, having been out to America on a scholarship, I definitely underestimated how many different options there were. You know, a couple of schools got in touch with me and I thought, brilliant, I'm gonna accept one of them. And it's like, well, no, hang on a minute. There are literally thousands of schools in the same way you wouldn't accept the first university option for yourself in the UK or Australia or New Zealand. You need to make sure it's the right one for you. And, and that's not just from a rugby perspective. That's from an academic perspective. That's from a location, finance. Um, you know, there's so many different factors that come into it to make sure it's the right school for you. But again, that's the purpose of us to make sure that you do find the right school that's going to challenge and develop you for four years, um, not only as a student, but also as an athlete as well. Now, obviously, broadly talking across all the sports, there's over 600 unis that offered international student athletes over $20,000 in scholarship um, for last year. So obviously over $80,000 for that four years during your degree. So as I'm sure you're already aware, if you're listening to this, you know that college sports in America are absolutely huge, um, particularly in certain sports. It's not unusual to have 100,000 you know, fans spectating an event, as well as it being on ESPN or major networks out there as well. In terms of finances, Again, I'm sure for the parents that are listening to this, um, something that's definitely favorable is that over 95% of our athletes, and to be honest, it, it's definitely close to 100, is um, are paying much less for university uh, than if they were to go to university in, I know this says the UK, but it applies to Australia and New Zealand as well. So any country outside of the US, you will end up paying significantly more whether it's for tuition, food and housing, but also additional elements as well that we'll touch on. There are 
disadvantages and advantages to both of them and that's the purpose of us to present you know both sides of that to you and we'll get to um, the fun stuff on the finances a little bit later on um, one thing that we often get asked is well how does the education system compare to that back in Australia or the UK or New Zealand is that you've only got to look at any list online that has the top 20 universities in the world and pretty much three quarters of them are going to be American. So whether that's Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Duke, you know, literally you could carry on probably listing hundreds of them that could be contenders for it. And I'm not sitting here saying that we're going to definitely get you into an Ivy League or a top 10 type school. However, it speaks volumes of the potential, you know, pedigree of the educational system out there. They do a lot of things very right. And yes, there are going to be universities that are nowhere near that standard but again for some of you listening it might be like I love playing rugby I'm excel at rugby academics I'm okay or it's not my strong point don't worry because that's the point of this we can find you a school that you can excel with your rugby and maybe the academics are good and you're going to get a good degree but you're not going to be stressing yourself you know having to compete with the next um, Mark Zuckerberg at Harvard or something so it's about finding the right fit um, I'd never been to America before I moved over there and where I live in the UK is a very, very small town. So to then go to living in downtown Chicago was definitely an eye opener to me. Still trying to figure out why I moved back, but here I am. Um, but thankfully getting to help the next generation to get out there as well. But in all seriousness, you know, the opportunity and experience to live in downtown Chicago for four years, to go to over 20 states in those four years as part of being essentially paid by a scholarship to be there you know I spent time in in New York and Florida and California and you know all these places that you see on tv and films and you want to go there and, and I'm getting scholarship to be there and play soccer was my sport but um yeah what an unbelievable opportunity as I said at the start of the seminar rugby is the fastest growing sport out there um, obviously they've got the big five so American football uh, basketball baseball and and soccer and ice hockey and I'm, I'm not sitting here saying that rugby soon gonna knock any of those five off the pedestal um, you know American football will always be the most popular however in terms of an emerging sport it's really gathering pace really really quickly uh, the popularity is there and I think because Americans are obsessed with American football it's actually and it's probably a controversial thing to say actually I don't want to offend too many people but there's definitely some transferable skills between rugby and American football um, so obviously for the rugby players they're a lot more tougher because they haven't got all the padding so um, there's definitely uh, transferable skills and that's probably why it's so popular um, comparable to how it is in Australia New Zealand and Europe and then going back to the finances what an opportunity to have that life experience, live in America for four years and potentially come out completely debt free, which is the case for many of our athletes. And I was fortunate enough to be in that situation as well. Uh, again, I can talk to you about my experience in a little bit, but to put it in the context, the, the school that I went to in Chicago was $40,000 a year. I had scholarship that covered $32,000 a year and I was left paying $8,000 a year, which I understand is a high amount. However, that's for tuition, food and housing. And I was able to work on campus with jobs that pretty much covered all of my costs. And it's also worth mentioning that I had a lot of options that were cheaper. However, you know, I wanted to go to a school that was in a big city like Chicago. Our team won the conference three out of the four years. The school academically was top 100 in the country. You know, for me, it just ticked all the boxes. So I wanted to do whatever I could to make that happen. And yeah, at the end of it, after four years, I came out completely debt free, whereas, you know, some of my peers and colleagues were still paying off their student loans for, loans for years to come. I, I don't know what your experience, Liam, was with universities and fees. I don't know if you want to elaborate on that in comparison. Yeah, I, I know from an Australian point of view, we've, we're very similar over here where um, you, you uni payment is delayed but it keeps accumulating for your for your undergraduate and your postgraduate studies uh i know personally i'm best part of five six years out and i've tacked on some postgraduate study and i've still got the best part of it's down to about fifty thousand uh left on on my uni degree to pay off so um i know that's a big interest for myself um having not had the american 
university experience, but obviously having many conversations with yourself and a lot of research, that um, that component um, is significant um, because when uh, when uh, the guys that are coming through uh, finishing school in the next 18 months or so, preparing for university, um, having what we call a hex debt over here, which is, which is your higher education debt, um, it, it's pretty significant when you join the workforce and start earning income because it, it automatically comes out of your, your payment, your salary um, until it's repaid. So um, the, the concept of, of not having a hex debt um, uh, is, is certainly worth exploring. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's really great insight for that. My sister was the same. She went to university in London, was paying off, you know, big debts for it. And maybe I kind of underappreciate almost the fact that I was able to get a degree worth $160,000 and come out of it completely debt free. But as I said, it's an unbelievable financial opportunity, but also, you know, what a place to do it as well. So that being said, I'll move on to the next step, which is the different divisions and regulatory bodies that are out there in America. Firstly, just talking from a general sports perspective, but then we'll also touch on specifically with rugby. But to, again, just reinforce the fact of how many options there are in America. If you're looking at this across all sports, um, first and foremost, if you're looking to go to a four year school, um, in general, then you're looking at an NCAA school or an NAIA school. Now, these are the governing bodies that the schools are affiliated with. Now, this isn't as applicable to rugby, but just to give some context, an NCAA, if you're a Division Three program, you cannot give any athletic scholarship. It's only academic, whereas the NCAA Division One and Division Two can give athletic scholarship. Therefore, as you can imagine, we mainly place players at division one or division two schools and then beyond that as you can see there's over 1200 colleges that compete in there so a lot of schools just within the ncaa then not as well known but the naia i played at a school in the naia myself so typically smaller schools although i was in downtown chicago there are over 250 institutions within that as well um, and then for those of you that as i said you're great rugby players, but maybe you're not the most gifted academics. There's an option to go to a community college, also known as a JUCO, also known as a two-year school, or also known as an NJCAA school. They love an acronym out there just to confuse you more. But the key thing to remember here is you would go to one of these two-year schools. You could get your grades up. It doesn't mean the rugby isn't going to be as good, particularly with rugby, an emerging sport. I think actually the governing bodies and divisions have a lot less relevance because what we'll get to is it's all overseen by USA Rugby and essentially rugby programs can pick what division that they want to compete at, whether that's a 1A or, you know, at, a, at an NJCAA school. So there's a lot more flexibility with that um, because the number of varsity sports is fewer they don't want to constrain the programs by having to definitely be in a certain division. But yeah, you'd go to one of these two year schools, you would get your grades up. And then as part of our service, we're here, we would then help you get a transfer to an NCAA or an NAI program for your final two years. A common misconception we get is that they, you know, you'd think you do two years there and then you have to do four years. It's not six years, it's still two years total. The reason why I bring this up is that it can work out very good because as you can imagine, if you're going to a two year school and the academics are easier, they're typically cheaper schools as well. Therefore, it could be a very good financial option to go to a two year program where the costs are cheaper. To put it into context, as I said, my school was $40,000 a year and that was a four year school. It's not unusual for a two year program to be as little as $10,000 a year for tuition, food and housing without scholarship. So as you can imagine, if you're a good academic and you can chuck some academic scholarship in there and also you're a good player and can potentially get, you know, athletic as well, you know, we could, you know, we've got athletes that are paying close to nothing for that. And ultimately your degree is where you finish, not where you started. So it doesn't say on the paper, by the way, they did two years at this program before. So that's not me sitting here saying so you should definitely go to an NJCAA. If you're listening right now and you're thinking, well, I'm a straight A student, so I don't need to do that then that's great as well. If you are a straight A student and you've got strong SATs, which we'll talk about as well in a bit, 
it might it might be that actually you qualify for a huge amount of academic scholarship and the fact that you're playing rugby and you might get athletic as well as an added bonus um but yeah just to loop back to what i was saying so usa rugby is like the governing body that oversees all of the both at a professional but also at a college level out there as well so as i said the the teams that are already there can be flexible with which division they play in um, and there's championships in the fall and the spring and they also have a huge sevens championship each year which is televised and has huge popularity and i think just reinforces how popular and how much fan base there is in america for that um, but yeah, as I said, we'll definitely share these slides with anyone. In fact, if you go on the website, you can download them directly from ussportscholarships.com forward slash rugby, I believe is the URL for that. Um, but you can see the number of athletes that are competing in America. You're looking here at over 550,000. So if you're listening to this seminar and you're thinking, oh, it's May time, I'd like to go out to America this August it might be that you've left it too late because I mean, I definitely underestimate what needs to get done ahead of you going out there. Um, but there's, there's a lot of milestones that need to get achieved, which we'll discuss shortly um, in order to make sure you're prepared for it. Because as you can imagine, if, if I'm a rugby player in America and I've wanted to go to college and play rugby, you know, for the last four years, I'm already thinking about what I need to get done to be the most prepared student athlete for that. So even if you're coming in a year, a year and a half, or even two years in advance, you know, you're then just putting yourself more on a level playing field to these American athletes who have aspired to want to do that since they are a lot younger. Um, in terms of a GPA, that's a grade point average. So if, if Liam here has got an A in one class and a B in another, the A is worth a four, the B is worth a three. So his grade point average would be seven divided by two, which is 3.5. Um, so yeah, quick lesson there for you. But essentially the key thing is if you wanna to go to a four year program, you do really need to be having above a 2.2 or a 2.3 grade point average, so above a C. Whereas if you're below that, the NJCAA could be a good option for you. Um, in terms of the SAT or the ACT, essentially any entrance exam, there are more variations, but those two are the most popular or most common, is if you're looking to go to a four-year program in a normal non-COVID year, um, I can't believe we're this far in without having mentioned COVID. I'm quite happy about that, actually. <laughs> um, hopefully that's a sign of things to come. But you would have to take the entrance exam and also score a certain amount in order to be eligible. Um, again, this isn't as pertinent to rugby uh, because it's still an emerging sport. But the reason why it's beneficial to do the SAT entrance exam is because it could mean that you qualify for more academic scholarship at the school that you're planning to go to. To. And an example of that, we had a rugby player recently who had just missed out on the score that he needed to get in order to qualify. I think it was for like two and a half thousand dollars extra scholarship. Well, that's 10 grand over four years. So uh, mum and dad, well, as much as he didn't want to, did say you're sitting it again. And luckily he sat it and he did get the score he needed. You know, that's just not ten thousand dollars off his cost. So it can be as important as that or it could be as important as you just need to have done it. So unfortunately for me at the school I went at, I didn't get any scholarship for my SAT, but I needed to pass it in order to be able to be eligible to play. So it was still an important part. But Liam, I don't know if you want to add anything to that if I've missed anything. No, no, but probably just reinforcing the, the I guess, from a, a rugby specific point of view that um, while some of the, the, the bigger college sports over there are quite strict in, in their region, their conferences and their groups, um, as rugby is growing and, and growing rapidly, there is still some, uh, some flexibility there in how they work and how those teams compete and who they compete against. And um, we'll probably talk a little bit later, but the, the the positive or another positive is some of the the travel that's associated um with that from a from a rugby point of view as well yeah no you make a really good point with the regional side because it's still emerging and believe me like obviously hundreds of programs have got rugby um programs within the university but maybe it's not a vast city level so like Liam, you're saying there is you don't want to be traveling eight hours if that's the closest team to playing to you because you're in a set division. So there is more flexibility there. But what will happen in the, in the upcoming years is 
all of these non-varsity teams will become varsity and then you'll see full conferences like you would with any program and as we said at the outset the fact that they made the decision to do a draft into major league rugby was really a huge statement of where they see the game going so it's really exciting time to get involved because if you look to go out to america in 2021 or 2022 by the time you finish there it's going to be you know really widespread and a very different you know proposition to what it is now Okay, so I did actually give you a bit of a teaser there to the SAT and the ACT anyway, but without putting you off um, the idea of going to America because you have to sit a three or a four hour exam is that, um, as I said, you, you need to do it if you want to go to a four year score, at least would recommend it. This year, there's been waivers to that because there's been so many test centres that have been closed down. However, you know, if you're able to do it, we'd always recommend that you do. What we'll get to later is we can provide all the support that you need to make sure that you do well within your entrance exam. So we've got, we'll get to it a little bit later, but there's a designated area on our website for our premier athletes where there's over 15 practice exams, there's videos, there's helpful resources. We've got partners that can give free tuition sessions as well. So it's not just here from a rugby perspective and, and finding the perfect rugby program it's really about helping you throughout the whole process including with any academic and admissions and paperwork requirements as well um, I don't really know what more to add to that other than yeah it's not fun um, it's pretty much just recovering from having sat it myself but I think the thing with the exams are they're progressively harder so you start off thinking oh I'm, I'm going to do amazingly and then it's like oh the reality kicks in about an hour that maybe it's not as easy as I thought. But again, it comes back to you're having to do a test, although it's in English. So, you know, it, you can understand it, but it's still an American standardized exam. So American students will have been doing exams like this since they were very little. So you're obviously at a slight disadvantage. So again, the earlier you can start the process and things like this, so you can practice, you're just, you know, positioning yourself in the best way possible. And uh, the easiest way to think of yourself is like a product, right? And and the coach is, is is shopping for a product. Which one do they want? Well, if I'm a coach, I want the one who's not only an amazing rugby player, but also an amazing student because they can get athletic scholarship and academic scholarship. Therefore, if I'm a coach, actually, I don't have to give them as much of my athletic scholarship because they already qualify for so much academically. Um, so yeah, that, that's why it can be an important part. But any questions about that, as always, just email us um, either liam at or admin at ussportscholarships.com um, and welcome any questions on that. Although we've got a bit of round, a round way of doing it, obviously just to reintroduce the company itself, US Sports Scholarships, is that we, we were started just with the sole aim of providing the best possible service to any student athlete looking to go out to America. And ironically, the reason why is because we, we used companies that were perceived or meant to provide that level of service and, and really got let down by that. So that is why we started the company, myself and three of my colleagues who had all gone out to America successfully. However, the experience we got was beyond terrible. Um, there was very little support throughout. So we decided we're going to start a company that, you know, by student athletes, for the student athletes, having been through the experience ourselves, which is where the company was born. As I said, the fact we've been doing it now for over 10 years, we're pretty much one of the longest established, uh, not only in the industry where we're based, but literally throughout the world. Um, and as you can see, our mission there. But when we first started, we were having to reach out to schools and introduce ourselves and let them know how we operate. Um, but as you can imagine, having done it for so long now, we've got a really good reputation, uh, especially because we're so selective. Um, so we get over 5,000 applications a year for rugby uh, for worldwide, and we only offer 25 places to our non-partners um, from that 5,000. So we're super selective. We only sign the best rugby athletes that are also preferably good academically as well, definitely helps. And the reason why we have this business model is it's a win-win it's for everyone because we've got a reputation for only sending the best international student athletes. And you as an athlete, you get the best possible personal service because when I went through the process, I was one of over 300 other athletes. I wasn't given a designated representative. None of my questions were ever answered, often waiting weeks for explanations, pretty much feeling like I had to do the whole process myself. 
that is the complete opposite. You'll probably get sick of hearing from us, but in a positive way, because we'll be constantly at you to make sure that we're keeping on top of the process, communication with coaches in order to get you the best possible scholarship. And as I said, because of the way that we operate, thankfully, and word of mouth and reputation, we've been able to grow so that from three members of staff, we've got over 50 um, you know, talented team members working for us in various capacities all across the world, obviously, including Liam here in Australia with um, heading up our rugby. Uh, we've, we've placed over 600 athletes in America on scholarship and, and proud to have got over $20 million in scholarship for those athletes. And as we said, we work with every single rugby uh, sports scholarship given university in America. And the key points here, as I said, experience, we've been through it connected and trusted um, because of the way that we work. But the key thing for us is that personal approach. And um, Liam, I don't know if you guys, is Trustpilot like the go-to out in Australia? It is, well? yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so we've got a Trustpilot page um, and, and and not many would because, you know, if you're signing high quantity and you're not delivering the service, you wouldn't be able to do that. But the way that we operate, we back our service as being the best out there. And therefore, you know, feel free to go on a trust pilot page. Or in fact, we can put you in touch with any of our other rugby athletes that we've already sent to America. And um, hopefully they'll uh, they'll give a positive review of us. But um, no, as I said, like we've got really great relationships with all our athletes and continue to be in constant communication with them while they're in America as well. That being said, I don't really want to bore you too much of a background. Obviously, you know that I went to a school in Chicago, which was the Illinois Institute of Technology. Um, I studied a business degree there. And I guess the key thing for you to, to get from it is that I was someone who had dedicated my life to sport, but had four um, injured back-to-back -back surgeries within two years and, and decided that I wanted to actually quit playing my sport and just go to university. But then I heard about the opportunity of going to America and I took that risk, um, particularly with my injuries. And it was the best decision I ever made because rather than go to uni in the UK, nothing wrong with that. Or, you know, for you, anyone listening in Australia or New Zealand doing that, absolutely fine. But for me, because I dedicated my life to my sport, I felt like I didn't really have anything to show for that if I was just going to university as a normal student. So the idea and the opportunity to live in Chicago, you know, play and train every single day and get to the fitness levels that I'd never thought I could get to. In fact, it's depressing thinking back at it now, actually, of where I've let myself decline back to. Um, but yeah, in all seriousness, you know, that opportunity and also someone who I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my career beyond sport. So you know, I studied business just because someone said that would relate to anything coming out of, of university. But ironically, it was the best decision because here I am 10 years later, you know, helping run a business that I absolutely love and passionate about helping the next generation of athletes who, who might be in the same situation. You might be listening right now and thinking, you know, I, I love rugby. Um, it's my pure focus in life, but maybe the opportunities are quite limited here or maybe going to university, it's not going to be the experience that I want. Therefore, America could be a great option for that. Um, and even beyond that, I went on to get a master's degree. So here's someone who's not, you know, not academically inclined, always been focused on the sport, now running you know, their own business in an international scale with a master's degree. I wouldn't have believed you going into the process, but, but that's what it's been able to deliver for me but at that point I'll pass you kind of on Liam as well just to give you know a bit more background about his rugby expertise as well. Yeah definitely um, so as you can see there my role uh, is, is head of international rugby um, and, and rugby's certainly um, I, I guess my area of knowledge. Um, I attended St Joseph's College in Hunters Hill um, where I graduated in 2009 which um, Seems like a little while ago, unfortunately. Um, but since then, I, I, I've been fairly closely linked with, with rugby uh, in Australia and New Zealand and the UK to an extent as well. So um, I, I did what, what the I guess the normal thing to do is, and that's to, I was located in Sydney. So um, I, I played in the Shoot Shield competition um, in Sydney um for four or five years um with randwick and, and northern suburbs um i then went across to new zealand um where i had a season of, of rugby um with stoke uh rugby club in nelson in the tasman catchment area 
um, and uh, and followed that traditional rugby path. Um, I'm now coaching in the Shoot Shield um, with the Hunter Wildfires um, team, which has recently entered the competition. Um, I, I guess for me, it's uh, I, I'm obviously quite close to this and, and have really enjoyed my involvement so far. Um, I guess a, a personal motivator for myself um, is just to bring some awareness to um, young rugby players that are coming through of what other pathways do exist. Um, I, I know from an Australian point of view and a, and a Kiwi point of view, it really is you finish high school and you go into club rugby and, and you fight it out for, for um, what statistically is actually a really small chance of making a career out of rugby. Um, so I, I guess I'm quite passionate about through personal experience and I guess what I've learned along the way um, of bringing some awareness around what opportunities exist uh, in America um, where, where people are able to capitalise on their uh, athletic ability um, and uh, and also some academic ability. But, um, yeah, head of international rugby based in Australia, I guess an initial focus on Australia and New Zealand uh, and then obviously helping Liam out with some of the UK and, and European uh, rugby players as well. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks for that, Liam. And I was just going to, I've got a few uh, mug shots here as well, but I guess the, the key other uh, people to pick out is Brett, who works for us in the UK, helping recruit players. And interesting story of Brett is he's actually a, a Kiwi himself, but he came to the UK on a, on a rugby and, and sports scholarship to study at St. Joseph's um, in East Anglia. For those of you in the UK who will probably be familiar with St. Joseph's, it's one of the kind of best and renowned independent schools uh, in the UK. They, they hold a very infamous rugby tournament every single year. And, and Brett still plays at a high level himself as well with Colchester in Essex. So, um, so Brett, but then also, although not the right sport, but, but Tommy Smith is a representative and ambassador for us um, on the soccer side of things, but again, is a Kiwi um, and has captained the All Whites and, and also played in Major League Soccer. And then Lewis Ludlam, also an alumni of St. Joseph's in the UK, who are, are friends of us at US Sports Scholarship, and he's currently playing for England. So, um, yeah, we've got some really good people within the program on the rugby side of things and, yeah, really excited about what, what we're looking to achieve with that. That being said, okay, so going on to what we're actually delivering as a company, our key core services, first and foremost, is the Premier Athlete Package. So I mentioned earlier, we get over 5,000 rugby applications. For those 25 um, who are fortunate enough to get through our application process and be offered a contract, that is being offered a place as a Premier Athlete. Now, this might be a bit confusing to look at, but again, you can download the slides, but just a few kind of key flow of, of how it works is that if you're listening to this and you haven't yet applied, we definitely recommend that you do so on our website, ussportscholarships.com forward slash apply. Only takes a couple of minutes to do so and you'll automatically get an email based on your responses of whether we believe you to be eligible for further discussions and into the next round of the process. We will be holding trial and showcase events for rugby in the UK, Australia and New Zealand. Obviously, between Brett and myself in the UK and then Liam and his team in Australia um, will be putting on events as soon as we can. Obviously, COVID, unfortunately, has been, you know put a bit of a hold to that, but we will prevail and we will get those events in as soon as possible. So again... Make sure you're following us on social media if you're not already. And also check out the events page on our website to keep up to date on that. For those that then are successful and decide to go ahead with the process, you would be given a designated representative. So, you know, naturally, if you're in the Australia region, it would be Liam. And again, if you're in the UK, it would be probably a combination of both Brett and myself. Um, and then once somebody starts the process, it can all, you know, progress very quickly because, it, you know, if you've got highlight videos or you've been to one of our events and we've got a good amount of footage for you, we can make your profile live immediately. So if you go on our website, there's a coaches area you'll see in the top navigation. So rugby coaches will be accessing that every single week and logging in and looking through potential athletes that they could recruit. 
Um, in fact, if I just skip ahead a little bit here. So here's an example of the coach's database. So they can search players by gender, sport, position, what they want to study um, and really filter out the athletes. And then on the right, you can see an example of one of our athletes where they click on the profile. You'll have the five to 10 minute highlight video um, that obviously needs to be good quality because as much as we've got these personal relationships with the rugby coaches, you know, if, if myself and Liam are saying, you know, we've got a kid here, he's amazing, we think he'd fit in very well, but then the footage doesn't really match up with what we're portraying, you know, that's not going to probably give the, the coach too much confidence. And then beyond that, if you scroll down further, you'd have all the athletes background in terms of their stats, so whether that's physically, but then also their academics, their athletic background, what level they've been playing at, any coaching recommendations. Now, when I went through the process, I also had my email address on there, which is fine, but I didn't have a designated rep. So all of the contact was coming through me and I didn't have a clue where Illinois was, to be honest, let alone whether a school was good or not. So barely had internet actually back then so it was really difficult to figure out which schools were good or not and they're obviously they're all saying that they're amazing I didn't understand which divisions were good so basically it was a complete nightmare for me so again the way that we operate with our athletes is we'd have a joint spreadsheet with you so if a coach gets in contact with Liam or myself about you you know we would update that spreadsheet with you know here's the school where they're based what the coach is like how many internationals they've got what their performance is like what the scholarship could be the academic reputation if we've got other athletes there or we know of athletes that we can put you in touch with and the reason why we're taking this more methodical process to it is to make sure that we've got all the right information so that we end up at the right school for you that it ticks all of your boxes that you're looking to get from the experience um, and another thing that we definitely don't do, which is what happened to me, was I'd said that I could afford $8,000 a year. So no big surprise when all the offers that came in were at best 8000 because, you know, it's like going to buy a house or a car. If I know what you're willing to pay for it, then I'm pretty much going to go for that. So that really did me a disservice. And again, because I was one of 300, that was probably the easiest way for them to, to do that. However, you know, it's, it comes back to that personal approach. And if we can not disclose financially what you can contribute potentially, and we're able to save you two or $3,000 by negotiations and a bit of to and fro and with those coaches, you know, we could save you over $10,000 straight away through that process over the four years. So again, that, that personal approach is very important to making sure we get you the optimal scholarship. Highlight video we talked about, it can be trial events. Also, I get that a lot of people use video software equipment and recording like VO is really popular here in the UK. Um, so in order of, you know, to get footage once COVID has, has stopped in the sense that, you know, fixtures can go ahead again, then it's going to be really easy to put together, you know, some good highlights, which I said is still very important. Then if you wanted to go to a four-year school, we provide the SAT support. If, again, not as specific or um, relatable to rugby, but it no doubt will be very soon, is that making sure that you get cleared by the relevant eligibility centres. Again, no need to go in huge detail, but the NCAA and NAIA have eligibility centres to prove that people haven't been professionals and also that they haven't been out of education longer than 12 months. And then the best way to think of us is like a sports rugby agent. So we're talking to all the various rugby institutions to try and get you the best possible scholarship. Uh, something that was pre-COVID becoming more common was athletes maybe whittling down their options to two or three schools and then maybe flying out to America, visiting all three in a week and then committing to that once they've seen it firsthand. One thing that's been very positive from COVID is because people haven't been able to do tours, most universities have got very good virtual tours now as well. Um, and particularly, you know, it's not a short flight uh, from Australia, let alone America, uh, UK to America. So that could be really handy. And then the best way beyond that to think of it is just like if you were going to university in the UK, Australia or New Zealand, you've just got to get cleared by admissions. Once you've done that, you can then book your visa appointment, sort things like health insurance, obviously, you know, they haven't got a national health system in America. So therefore, making sure you're fully covered both as a student and also just an athlete is very important part of that process, which we're there to help with as well. And then, as I said, the big thing is the ongoing career support. So 
my experience after two years I was doing fairly well I was getting better financial offers from schools that I would like to potentially go to and the company I went through wanted payment again for their services even though that was never disclosed at the time of signing with them so I remember saying to them well if you give me my highlights then I can sort it myself but again they wanted money to buy their intellectual property so it was clear to me that they didn't have my best interests at heart at all and but then funnily enough when I won the awards that I did they, they wanted testimonials for their website so as you can tell for me it wasn't a great experience so that's you know what we want to make sure we're doing is supporting our athletes and giving them the exact service that we would have wanted ourselves talked about the coaches database and earlier on I talked about the athletes area so you know, if Liam here is just signed up to the process, one of the first things you'll do as part of the onboarding is be given um, exclusive access to our athletes area, which would give you a checklist like Liam, here's everything that you need to get done between now and when you go out to America. And within that step, so if I clicked on SAT exam, for example, as you can see there from the screenshot, you've got practice videos, practice exams, all the resources that you need to make sure you get the best possible score. So that's there. And also you can see on the screenshot on the left, this browse university database. So this is, I think it's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use the word revolutionary, but it's, it's definitely unique in the industry and something that again, I definitely would have loved to have at the time. We get that there's something called the internet and Google where you can do your research yourself. But what's great about this platform is I can search sports, states, divisions. I can pull up all of the rugby programs in one place. I can easily watch their campus videos, learn more about the school, the sport, the coaches, all within one place. So that's all part of that process as well. It's worth adding at this stage too. Let me just check the slides is that if you're listening right now and you're thinking, this sounds great and maybe you're waiting on a decision because we haven't seen you play yet or you're just you know maybe using your time in order to make sure you're making the right decision if you do want to proceed one great step that you can take is to just register for our online platform you can cancel at any point every single month you could sign up and then just cancel within that same month with that, we can create your online profile. So we can, if you've got highlights already, we can put that up there. Coaches will still be able to access that. You still have full access to all those resources we just talked about online. So this university database. Um, and we have had rugby and soccer and um, golf athletes that have been placed just by being on that platform because coaches can access it um so yeah that can be a really good starting place but as i said if you are lucky enough to be a, a premier athlete part of that 25 cohort obviously you would get access to that as well so there's basically two options there if that was confusing at all feel free to go on the website as i said there ussportsscholarships.com forward slash services and you'll be able to see how those two packages differ at this stage, as I said, there is the internet. You could contact coaches yourself, but as you can imagine with any sport and in particular rugby being so popular um, and often it's the assistant coaches, not the head coach who might be the actual decision maker doing the recruitment, they will be getting hundreds if not thousands of emails and videos about rugby players from all across the world because you know, it is gonna become one of the pioneering rugby nations, no doubt in the world. And obviously their college, you know, college sports system is second to none. So it's very difficult to kind of get through to those decision makers and even get their eyes on your video and your profile. And then beyond that, as I said, it's, it's then having those negotiation skills and experience to know what is or isn't a good scholarship offer from a program. Um, but as I said, we've been doing it over 10 years, 100% success on athlete placement for rugby athletes. Um, in terms of sports in general, as we said, over 20 million secured in scholarship. Something that a lot of people listening right now might have heard of is the term of a full scholarship. And what this full scholarship means is that the cost of tuition, food and housing is all covered. Doesn't that sound amazing? I'm sure that's what we all want. However, there's a caveat to that. And, and I'm talking firsthand from experiences. I did have some full scholarship offers, but I remember them being in places that I did not want to be, and that's no disrespect to them, but for me, they looked very much in the middle of nowhere. Their, their sports program wasn't good. Their 
academics weren't good and to the point where I, I generally would have rather just stayed in the UK and gone to university there than go out to have that experience. So yes, you know, around, as it says there, around a quarter of our athletes do get full scholarships, but doesn't mean it's the right program. Um, I think the best way to come into this process is to expect there are going to be costs. But again, looping into the beginning, it's still significantly cheaper than if you went to a university or college in your home country. And um, yeah, also, if you do well out there, there's no reason why your costs can't go down. So we've had athletes go out on X scholarship, but actually their costs, say they were, I don't know, $10,000 for year one. If they've done well academically and with their sport, that could potentially be zero for years two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. So it's like anything in life. If you put the work in, you will get rewarded for that. Um, as I said earlier on, we've got trial events in UK, Australia, New Zealand, and Dubai. Um, and yeah, Liam, obviously we're right now in the process of trying to finalize our upcoming events. I think the only thing stopping us right now is still the tail end of COVID. But as I said, hopefully we'll be able to announce those soon. And then obviously, yeah, we talked about the full four-year support. I don't know, Liam, if there's anything you want to add to that at all or all good? No, I, th I think that's pretty good coverage, mate. Cool. And here's obviously the more factual point is guarantee. So, you know, this all sounds great in terms of the service, but obviously the reality is, and unfortunately we're not able to, but we can't sit here and watch your video and listen, you know, look at your academics and go, you're going to get an X percent scholarship from this school and you know that's going to be guaranteed because there's so much of this process that is actually under your control not our control at all as well as you know the coaches because we can provide the expert support and we can optimize your profile and circulate it to the right coaches and provide all the support and the, help you with the search but ultimately we can't guarantee what those offers can be uh, or what percentages or whether they're full scholarships or even the locations of schools that are going to come in contact and, and make interest and offers, which leads me to this one, which is this, the, the key bits that are under your um, control. So obviously, if you're offered a Premier Athlete package or you want to do the online, that's up to you. But um, how you've done in your high school grades, how you've done beyond high school, how you perform when you do an entrance exam or when you're filmed or how you're performing right now rather than being the second team are you able to get into the first team are you able to get within the men's program early and have that experience rather than just being restricted to your age group um, so all these key things are going to make you a more attractive student athlete to coaches but also how how do you get on with those coaches because my idea of a good coach or Liam's idea he might want you know he might have a cry after a game and need an arm around him or he might be the type that actually reacts well to a bit of criticism so you know how you get on with those coaches you'll soon figure out where from a player's perspective oh I think this rugby coach could really develop my game and you know we'd encourage you to have these discussions with the coaches with your parents um, present as well because ultimately if they're sending you to America they want to be confident that beyond the rugby can I feel confident that this coach is going to look after my son or daughter as if they were their own and um, you know develop them as a person as well because four years is a long while and and you know Australia or UK to America is a long flight so you want to make sure that there's somebody there taking care and as I said we are there for you as well we've got you know people working for us in America too so that is part of our responsibility but ultimately the main touch point for you is going to be those you know that coaching team so that's very important and then ultimately where you choose to go but I wanted to go to Chicago that might be Liam's worst nightmare I don't know Liam your experiences of America where and have you got like an ideal location in in mind that you'd want to go to uh, that's a good question, actually. Probably not Chicago. I don't want to <clears throat> disrespect you in front of people, but possibly not Chicago. <laughs> any, any reason why? Is it, is it the terrible wet winter weather they have? or? Yeah, I, I'm not massive on that component. Um, yeah. So that certainly contributes. Yes, yeah, somewhere by the coast would be the, uh, would be the pick. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people would go for that. Often when we're talking to potential rugby athletes, a lot of them have been on holiday to Florida. Um, it's yeah. always obviously the, the popular one. And yeah, to be honest, I'd never really considered Chicago either. I didn't even research how bad their uh, Narnia-esque winters are, to be fair. So that was a shock for me. I thought it was going to be sun for four years. But 
you know, it just comes down to the fact that every single rugby player that we've got involved is needs that personal attention and care to understand what they want from the experience. You know, where do they want to go? What type of academic or rugby environment do they need to help develop them? Not just thinking, oh, financially, that offer looks fine. So we'll just agree that and move on to the next one. That is not what we're about at all. OK, so I was going to say quiz time, but it's definitely not quiz time. Don't worry, we're not going to ask you to uh, identify all of the schools on here. But the key point of it is, and we can give you examples of athletes that we've placed, is that, as I said, there's no bias here in terms of whether you want to go to an NCAA, an NAI or an NJCAA school. Um, the key thing here is just showcasing that we can work with the best universities across all of these governing bodies. So, you know, if your academics aren't that strong, we can find you one of the best rugby programs at NJCAA. You know, if you want to go to an NAIA program or an NCAA, again, we can find you the best rugby programs and scholarships that are right for you. You will be happy to know it's been a pretty intense, um, quick whiz tour of how the process works, but also how we are integrated in that process in terms of helping you get out to America. Um, at this point, what I'll do is I'll quickly run through um, between us what the top frequently asked questions are that, that we receive from athletes. And then, as I said, if you've got any questions on the back end of this, feel free to email Liam or myself or anyone in the team. And again, we can arrange a personalized discussion like this where we can answer any additional questions. Are you, are you eligible for this process? First and foremost, if you haven't, you know, as I said, go on the website, ussportscholarships.com forward slash apply. Reckon it takes one to two minutes max to fill that in and you'll get a decision pretty much immediately. Highlight video, it's, it's a good one. Um, I'd say with rugby more than other sports, you know, training footage can be just as helpful as match footage. But also, you know, if you're the one that's do, you're doing the kicking for your team, they don't want 10 minutes of you just kicking. You know, they want to see your intelligence. They want to see your positional play. They want to see you finding the pass, but also being able to tackle. It is really about showcasing the wide range of skills that you've got. Um, so, yeah, that, that would kind of be the kind of the key thing to pick out from that. But again, that's the whole point of us, because you give us the footage and we'll put together what we believe would best showcase you for the coaches out there. Uh, a really key point here is can you take a gap year? I, I did that myself. And the reason being is because the company poorly prepared me and I hadn't even done the entrance exam. But it did benefit me because I could save up a bit more money and also like physically and fitness wise develop. So I was in a better place for going out to America. So, you know, if you're like finishing education this year and you're thinking, well, I want to wait a year, that's absolutely fine to do so. However, going back to an example earlier, if it's like May time that you're watching this and you want to go out in August, you've probably left it too late to start the process. So the earlier you can start it, the better. Get that it's a huge decision. But if you've decided it is the route for you, you know, you should start the process as soon as possible. What exams do you need to sit? We've already talked about the SAT and the ACT. I think that's had enough um, coverage, so that's fine. What can you study out in America? A lot of athletes have this conception, misconception that you have to study something sports related because you're out there on a sports scholarship. Not at all. As I said earlier, I studied business, but if you want to study English, maths, engineering, um, architecture, whatever it is, as long as the university that you're looking to go to offers that as a major, you're fine. If you pick something very niche like physiotherapy and there's only 40 odd schools that offer that in the entire country, then obviously recognize that you're highly limiting your chances of being able to find the right program, not making it impossible, but just looking at it from a numbers game, it makes it more challenging. Ideal time to apply, obviously we've hit hard home, you know, with the idea that you'd need to start that, you know, a year and a half to two years in advance, ideally. But again, don't panic if it is six months ahead of, you know, you started and you're thinking I've left it too late. That can all, you know, we can also turn it around very quickly, but it's just, again, limiting your chances because coaches will recruit a year, two years in advance um, in order to, because as every year they've got, uh, you know, rugby players that are graduating. So they need to replace those players every single year. 
What determines how much scholarship you get can vary hugely. I know having had conversations with a lot of rugby players is, well, I'm good at rugby, so I'll get a good scholarship. Unfortunately, it's not that straightforward. Um, you're a student athlete and the student part comes for, you know, first for a reason, because if you've got really good academics, it really takes the pressure off in terms of how much athletic scholarship you need to get as well. And as I said from the offset, I got 50% of my uh, costs covered because I was an international student and 50% because of my soccer and my sport. So therefore, you know, my academics didn't really come into it other than that I needed the minimum in order to be eligible. So every school is different. Um, and yeah, it's important to acknowledge that every school is different. Therefore, scholarships are going to work differently. What other costs can you expect to incur? I did promise you I'd bore you with a bit more finances at the end, but unfortunately here we are, is that those entrance exams you're going to have to pay for. As I said, you can sit the exams more than once, although not many people are going to want to sit a four hour exam, say six or seven times. But again, it might be that you sit it twice and you're able to then get the score you need. Eligibility centres isn't really a concern here. Flights, unfortunately, are going to have to pay for your own flights. But if you book them far enough in advance to return, it, it can be very affordable. Health insurance, we talked about. Most universities will either cover you um, comprehensively anyway, if not be able to get you it very cheap. And if they can't, we're able to help with that process too. And then finally, you know, for many universities, it's becoming more common is you'd have to use like a transcript evaluation company so they can convert your Australian grades or your UK grades into what a US grade would be. And then finally, obviously, you've got to pay for your visa as well. I think it's, it's ridiculous what they charge for it, but ultimately you need it and it covers you for five years. So you can't really avoid that. On a more positive note with finances, as I said earlier, because you've got that student visa, it enables you to work on campus. And because the American students could easily get jobs off campus, you will typically find that you'd get first dibs and first shout on any jobs that are on campus. So uh, I use the term work very loosely. I was probably on Facebook or Netflix, but I used to work in the gym or you could be like a student assistant or work in the cafeteria, the library. You know, there's going to be hundreds of jobs. And I'm, I'm not sitting here saying you're going to be a millionaire from it, but if you go back to my experience, that was what made it possible for me to come out completely debt free after the four years. So what is next um, in this process is that we're currently recruiting for 2022, 2023. Um, as I said, if you're sitting here and you're thinking you want to go out 2023 and you feel like that's ages away, hopefully what you've got from today is there's a there's a number of milestones that need to get done before then. And you can leave it late and make it more stressful for yourself. Um, hopefully not too stressful because that's what we're here for, to make it as less stressful as possible. But as you can imagine, the earlier you start it, you know what process is coming up and you can take your time on it. You can study sufficiently for the SAT and do well. We can make sure that the highlights are exactly as we want that, you know, just everything we can make sure is completely right. Um, so again, looping back, if you haven't completed the application, please do. We can then arrange a free consultation and online Zoom call, um, either with myself or Brett or, or Liam, and, or if you're local enough and restrictions aren't applying at the time, obviously we can meet you in person as well. If the, um, as I said, at the time of recording this, there aren't any events yet scheduled in due to COVID, but it might be actually the time you're watching this, there are already events. So um, do check the website for that. And then, yeah, beyond that, as I said, what we do, we get over 5,000 applications every year. Every single week as a team, we sit down and we decide if we think a candidate's worthy of offering a place as a premier athlete. And then all that exciting process starts from there if you're successful with that. I think yeah so at this point obviously we'd like to thank everyone um for listening today hopefully you haven't skipped too much of it and, and you've stuck with us i really appreciate that um but yeah before kind of wrapping up completely liam i didn't know if there was anything that you wanted to add to it no i i guess i particularly for the australian and, and new zealand based um rugby students and rugby athletes i, I guess i do encourage you to to look at look at this opportunity and to look at America. Um, I, I know um, it's not the common pathway or the normal pathway, and and it's probably likely you haven't even looked at America um, as an opportunity for you to pursue and capitalise on your on your rugby ability. 
Um, but yeah, I, I do encourage you to, to look at it and, and to get in touch um, because it, there is some really, really strong upsides to, to looking at it. So whether you go through with it, whether it, whether it eventuates, that's kind of neither here nor there, but the, um, I guess opening your horizons a little bit to um, different pathways and, and what America may potentially offer um, is certainly something I, I would encourage. But yeah, we're, we're here to help, um, as you've outlined. Yeah, no, you make a really good point there is that, you know, so many rugby players that we've had and, and other sports going years back is that they just, you know, maybe athletes decide not to do it, maybe just because they're just not aware of it. And then you see them years later and they'll be saying, oh, I wish I would have done that. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's kind of cliche to say it, but because once you've been out of education longer than a year, you lose eligibility for the process. It really is like a once in a lifetime opportunity um so look and, and that's not to say that it's definitely right for everyone I think it's a certain yeah. type of person who's able to kind of take that leap of faith and move country when you're at a young age and 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 take that opportunity and run with it it isn't for everyone however the key thing for us is like Liam was saying there is giving you all the information you need so you can confidently say yes I want to do it or no I don't want to do it the whole point of it no regrets basically and i think the thing that speaks volumes though for america is we've never sent anyone to america who's done their degree and then either come back or finished and gone oh i wish i'd have never gone to america but as i said so many athletes who don't do it or aren't informed of it or even liam like you're saying wasn't aware of it and then you're going well i wish i'd have known about it because i'd have done it myself that that's yeah. not what we want to be in um but as i said like the key thing for us is if you do decide you want to do it is you know we're confident that we can deliver the best personal service for our athletes um, because of our experience and the team that we've got on board. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's a wrap. As always, I, I've talked too much, but hopefully um, it's all been worthwhile for you. And as I said, um, please do apply um, and feel free to have a chat with us. It's, it's been great um, sharing our our process and what we do with you.